everyone, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, please do consider subscribing and if you're returning, welcome back. So we're gonna start a new colour along today. So we've just finished up in the most guard and I'm moving over to Fragile World now. So this book I have just disbound myself. So I will be removing this page from the boot whilst we work on it just so I can get into the spine. That's the good thing about disbinding your books is that you can take the pages out where they are and pop them back in. So I'm gonna be doing this antelope page. So very carefully, I am just gonna pop it out the book. Now you can see what these little punches are like. And then when you want to pop them back in, you literally just put it back over and push it, push it back down. It's really, really good. So I'm gonna pop the page there. So I am going to do a sort of a pastel background with this. Now you can use any pastels. It doesn't. I'm using the pan pastels today, but it doesn't have to be the pan pastels. You can use any soft pastels. Just find, you know, similar similar kinds of colours. I am going to pop a piece of paper just underneath the bits I'm working on, so it doesn't go all over my desk. But I think, I think we'll start at the bottom actually. So as you can see, this is sort of a very scenic background. So we would have the sky sort of up here and then down towards here, we would have more of a either a grassy area or a sort of, I wanted to do a bit of a brown background down here, I think. Or I might go for green all over up until about here where the grass stops and then go into the blues and try and create a bit of clouds up there. If I can, I'm not saying it'll be perfect, but we shall see. So I think I'm just going to get straight into it. I am just going to use this tool today. Now this is a pan pastel soft tool, but you don't have to use these. Um, before I got these, I use I used to use the um, you know the Q-tips. They're quite good for getting into little little teeny tiny bits. So don't worry about that. I have picked up this green, but I'm going to lighten it up in some areas so this is i want not to try and look right it crumbling all over me this one is called chrome oxide green shade and then i'll just be mixing it with some white to lighten it up um at some point but i will keep it dark right at the bottom i think and then brighten it up as it comes a bit further up so are we zoomed in enough do you think while we do this bottom bit is that better that's better right so i'm just going to dip into my pan pastel i have got a bit of tissue just to it is good to just wipe a bit of excess off sometimes um but yeah let's get straight into it so don't worry if you go over some of the leaves as well because if you've got an eraser any type of eraser will erase soft pastels really really easily that's the good thing about them you don't have to panic about oh no it's gone over my illustration we can erase all that and get it all nice before we spray it with a fixative i do use a fixative on my pages where i put pastels down um it stops it transferring you know when you put your book back together and you're turning the pages you don't want the pastel um transferring onto your other coloring pages so i do use a cheap fixative off amazon i think it's called frisk f-r-i-s-k and um, that works well for me. It's the cheapest one I found on there and it, it works well. So there's no point me paying anything more expensive. I will not be selling these colouring pages. So I don't need to worry about the longevity of any fixatives or anything like that. Although I think it should be fine, the one I've got anyway. But it's not like I'm selling this artwork or anything. So I don't need anything special. So all down here, I'm just going to go in with a straight chrome oxide green pan pastel. I'm not going to whiten it up yet. Just because you want some depth into your illustrations, it's nice to just, in the shadows, make it really dark. And then as you're getting further up, you can make it a bit brighter. So I'm going to make this transition somewhere around here. Um, but I'm just going to deepen up this bit first because it's leaking a bit lighter there oh there we go so i'm going to put my dark here 
and then we'll try and transition it into a lighter shade so i'm going to add um some white now see how that's lightened up a bit are we still in frame let's just pull it down a little bit so we don't get lost there's a cute little bug there as well i think it's one of those shield bugs really cute i'm going to use my tissue to lean on here so that i don't pop my finger on the pan pastel because you can get grease marks and we don't want that now i'm going to wipe my brush off now so i'm going to wipe any excess off on here because i do just want to fade this out now I don't like that mark it's left on there. There must have been a bit of grease on my page. So I'm just, with my needable eraser, I'm going to see if I can get these grease spots off. Let's pull that away. So just very carefully. Try and rub it away and we'll see what happens when I put my pan pastel back on the page. If it does it again, then it's obviously something that's stuck to the paper and it won't be able to be rectified. But we'll see. We'll try and smooth it over a little bit. That's better. That's better. If you come across anything like that, you can, you can fix it. So that's nice and blended now. So that's um, where our transition's going to start into the sky. So I'm now going to go over onto this side and we're going to do the same thing. Now it's hard to tell what is the antelope's body over here. And what is going into grass and I think the grass is actually going on to the antelope's body isn't it and then we've got this waterfall running down here so I think I mean the grass looks like it's showing as it's coming all the way down to here and I'm not sure whether I want to do it as grass or whether I just want to do it as his body because it's your colouring page but yeah, let's do it as grass because it does look like grass so in with the darkest color again straight into the um chrome oxide green no whitening whitening it down at the bottom you know what i'm so tired of my words i cannot talk today my little boy was a bit sniffler last night he doesn't like it when he has a cold i mean who does really but he really gets upset when he has a stuffy nose like he hasn't worked out how to blow his own nose yet. He's five, but he just can't blow his own nose. So whenever he's got a snuffler nose, he will just wake up every hour crying because he's got a stuffy nose. And I was like, oh, I was so tired. <laughs> so tired this morning. Even my daughter overlaid this morning. She said she set her alarm and she didn't hear it. That's what she said. So I ended up having to drive her into school when she normally gets the bus by herself. So that was fun as well. That was fun right yeah that's the edge of the waterfall so if we just go here and then this is where i'm going to start brightening the grass up so if you just use what's left on your brush as the pan pastel starts to run out it will naturally get light get a bit lighter anyway i'm going to also use this without dipping back in i'm going to use this just at the tops of the antelope as well where, where you can see that sort of grass there we've got some rocks rocks there on him remember not to be too panicked if you get any of it on the rest of the illustration because it will erase it will erase guys so I'm going to dip into a bit of white now. I don't need much because it has already whitened up because we're going to make that transition to the sky around here, which is similar sort of distance on the other side as well. there we go so i'm going to make that transition now so because i've not really got a light shade of blue in pan pastels i will have to pre-mix this and lighten it up because i want a really light sky blue but i do only have this one 
so i'm going to have to mix it with my white and try and lighten this up a lot but this shade in case you want to know is the ultramarine blue shade um but i'm going to mix it with my white also i'm going to try and put some clouds into the sky so let me bring you down so i'm not very good at this type of thing but i'm going to wing it we're going to see what happens i am going to put the white down first so i'm going to roughly put a guide of where i want sort of white clouds to be and then i'm going to go round those with my blue that's the plan that's the plan whether it works out don't know guys <laughs> we'll see we'll see so i'm going to go in first with just my white i've got a clean tool so if you want to get a clean tool or a clean q-tip you don't want to be using your green one what you've just used down there i'm going to just really randomly try and map out where i would want some clouds i'm not bothered about these little little oh, what do you call them the little seeds off the flowers aren't they i'm not too fussed about those so you you will be able to see you you can't see on camera but you will be able to see when you do it yourself where you've put the white because although it's a bit tricky to see it sort of dulls down all the line out so you can you sort of got an inkling about where you've put it i'm hoping i can see anyway and there's one sort of there and then i'm gonna put another little one up here somewhere and maybe here so very randomly now i'm gonna dip into my blue and try and just I might end up mixing it on the actual page, my blue. But this seems to be a nice shade that I've got going on. So I'm just going to get into all those little areas. Again, if we go over the leaves, I can just get rid of it. It's fine. We can erase it. I'm not too worried. But I do want to be mindful of where I've put the sort of clouds where I think I put one up here, didn't I? So I'll leave that bit white there. I did put one here, so we'll work our way around there. You don't want much pigment on your brush when you're making the transition from the sky to the grass either, so try and make it as light as you can down there. You don't want a very harsh line. So when there's not much pigment on your brush, you can just go all down the bottom and meet it with that green meet it with that green so that's what I'm going to do why there's not much on my brush there we go so starting up here, I have put a cloud in around here, so I'm going to make this bit a bit darker. And then as we get towards where I want the cloudy bit to be, I'm going to dip into my white again. And just blend it like that. Going back into the dark again here, so I've had the cloud a bit there, then dip back into the white. Move it all around. This is totally winging it, guys, because let me tell you, I'm not the best at things like this. But it's all about giving it a go, isn't it? It's all about giving it a go. Got a little bit of a grease mat there again, which I don't like, so I'm going to erase that and go over it again. that might be something stuck to the page so we might be stuck with that if i go over it again and it happens again it's something on the page what won't won't come off let's just try and be careful well, that's all right so we've got our little cloud there we've got one up there i have put one here haven't i Right, so we'll start off with the darker bit at the top there 
around here. We're still in frame. I'm all stuff the screen then. I'm all stuff the screen. So again, as we're coming down to the bit where we want a bit of a cloud, dip back into your white. Put a bit of dirt blue around the edge. Then dip back into the white and fade it in. Again, dipping back into the white to fade this bit into that cloud. It's leaking okay. Too shabby for a first attempt, is it? Right, going over to this side of the page now. Where did we put our clouds here? I think I put one above that antelope there, somewhere around about. So, Putting a bit more of a darker colour into these little areas. I'll use the leftover before we dip into the white I'll use the leftovers down here and just on the edge there just a little bit on the edge then I'm going to dip into the white for this little tiny cloud we go then just this top corner to do now so dipping back into the blue to get a bit deeper in the corner again I'm going to use a little bit of that white, so dipping back into the white for a little cloud here. And you can see I've left a little tiny bit of white there. And there we go, I'm quite happy with that. I think that's quite a nice delicate background. So I'm going to lift it up and blow all the dust, excess dust away. I'm going to move this sheet away. So I will pull you up so you can see the uh, the whole thing a bit better. There is an emergency vehicle going past, so if you can hear that, that's what that is. So now I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to clean my lines up. So anywhere where I've gone over the illustration with a pan pastel, I'm just going to use my new double eraser to erase that off. So if I've gone over any of these little um, leaves, I don't want it on. I'm not too fussed because they are going to be green as well. So I can't even say I'm that I'm that fussed about the green going over those. So I might just actually leave those bits. Um, but if there's any of the antelopes that you've gone over, possibly you've gone over the legs of some of these antelopes down here and you need to just dab it off a little bit. Just clean up. Clean up a little bit. Anything you don't want on here needs to be removed before you spray the fixative um, because then if you spray the fixative and see something and try to erase it, it might not erase very well 
So I'm just going to get into this corner down here on the antelope's nose. Sorry if my hand's in the way, but I have got a bit on the nose what I want to get off. Because the antelope, of course, is not going to be green. It's going to be a lovely brown shade. Like a, uh, I don't know what shade to call it. Yeah, let's get some of that blue off the leaves up here. I don't particularly want blue leaves. And then, of course, there's this bit here that we want off its little horns or whatever they are. Whatever they are. So let's just go over all that. This little antelope's got some on his legs. My hand's in the way, I apologise. It's uh, tricky work, this, getting all this cleaned up. Um, there might be a little bit on the ear there, maybe. Let's get that off. Oh. I think more or less that's all right. Everything we're going to be going over is similarly the same colour. The grass where we've got a bit over these leaves, I'm going to be going in with similar colours. There's really no point removing it, but you can if you want to, if you really don't want it. If it really bothers you, um, then you can take more time to remove it. But everything's off the antelope, I want off the antelope. I've got the green where I want it to be down here. Just neaten up the waterfall line a bit. But yeah, that's pretty much what I want it to be. So I will go off and spray it with a fixative. I'll just quickly show you the fixative that I use. No, actually, you know what? I'm not going to spray the fixative yet. I think I'm going to base him with a pan pastel. Yeah, I think I'm going to base him with a pan pastel and then do the details on top in pencil. Right, don't spray your picture yet, guys. <laughs> don't spray your picture yet. I am going to pop a bit of colour down on him. So I think I'm going to, to get the shade that I want on this antelope, I think I'm going to mix these two colours together. You've got to ignore the state of my pan pastels. They've been dropped so many times and crumbled. Um, but this colour is, let me check, it is yellow ochre tint. Yellow ochre tint. And this one is look burnt sienna shade so i'm going to mix the two together and i'll just show you because i did a little tester on the side on a piece of paper i waft it off so when i did the tester it came up this sort of color so it is the sort of color that i want for the antelope if you mix them together so i'm just going to do that guys and create a base i might base this waterfall as well using the same color as up here the same blue yeah, I think I'll do that. And I'll do that first while I've still got the brush for it. So I'll base this waterfall just so it's got a little base of colour down. We're not going to go in with anything harsh because I will do that with my coloured pencils. And we'll get into all the shading and, and good stuff with the coloured pencils. But just, you know, it makes it easier. Because normally when I colour with coloured pencils, I choose a different, um, a few different tones. A lighter, medium and a darker tone tone of pencils and that's how I do my shading normally the lightest colour that goes down is acting as a base just as this is doing um, so that's all I'm going to do nothing too dark it's really pale just like the sky now I'm going to go in on the antelope so I'm going to mix these two colours just at the sides of me and I may even mix them on the page as well a little bit like I did with the sky just adding lighter colours to mix it up on the page but I think I've sort of got a shade I'm happy with, I think. So I'm going to start here in his little neck area. Like I say, if you want to lighten anything, darken anything, you can do that on the page. You can just add a mix on the page as well. And then, of course, we'll be going in with pencils as well. Pencil detailings are going to be part two, guys. So it's all the base, part one. Part two is going to be the colour pencil details. So I'm just adding a bit more of that lighter shade, that ochre tint up there. I'm going to allow the colour 
to fade out as we get a bit further down here so I'm naturally allowing that to fade out because we have the shadow all under the neck so it would be darker and then as we get down here it is lighter so just let all your pigment run out on your brush down this bottom end you can even add some more of the ochre if you need to but there we go I'm also going to use this brush to go into some of the lighter areas on the nose so use up what's left because remember this is just mainly a base we are going to put all details in I'm just going to use my tissue to hold this so I don't get any thin on my page um, we are only using it as a base so it doesn't have to be the be all and end all we're just creating we're getting rid of the white space basically we're getting rid of the white space right i'm gonna mix some more of the brown into it now especially in the shadowed areas still in frame so in the shadowed areas darker got a cute little one up there <laughs> I'm gonna move this tissue a bit around here got his little ear as well don't let me forget about his ear because i always miss little important bits like that i think pan pastels and soft pastels give they do really you know it's in the name they do give things a soft a really soft appearance they're really lovely I'm going to make it a bit darker for in the ear and then add a bit more of the ochre to the edge of the ear so am we missing any bits on this apart from the horns because I'm going to do them a different colour am we missing any bits gonna go in with some more down here there we go so i think i'm happy with that as a base so i am now going to use the same colors on the little tiny antelopes that you can see so there's one two three so same sort of thing just mixing some more colour at the side of me just to get the right sort of shade so again same thing it's just acting as a base darker in the shadowed grey scaled areas and a bit lighter everywhere else don't worry if you go out of the lines as well over here because we can clean it up again before we spray it. I'm not going to worry too much about these horns because they are teeny tiny. I'll do them with pencil. That is going to be so hard to do. Even with my little brushes. So we'll just do the top one up here. Then I'm going to clean it up and spray it once I've done the horns <laughs> the big horns you might not be able to see much at the minute but I am just literally there's no it is just a base so you're going over everything all of the antelope with this colour right so it's little horny things or whatever we call them i'm going to use a different brown for these as a base 
remember everything's just a base at the moment i'm going to use this one so this one is called raw umber raw umber so i'm just going to dip into this now the first initial dip i'm going to start with the shadowed areas the gray scaled areas so with the bulk of my pigment i'm going in where it's darkest does that make sense it makes sense dip back in again just once if you're using pan pastels because they're very pigmented you barely need to touch that pan pastel um palette and you're getting a good you're getting a good pigment right so now you've got your initial darkness down you're going to clean off the brush because you want all that access off you don't want all that on now and all i'm going to do now is just blend blend it out into those lighter areas like that this is the initial base this is paving the way for what we're going to do with the pencils There we go. So I'm just going to clean it up a little bit now, guys. So getting in your double eraser again, I have just gone over a little bit over here. I might end up erasing some of the sky, but I will get my if I do that, I will get my blue back out and just touch it up a bit. Right there. Where's my blue brush gun? The one I have my blue on. Let's just. Touch it up a little bit around there. Again, we've gone over a little bit down here. That's in the clouded area, so that can stay white, that's fine. Let's get it off the rocks. There we go, and I think that's all right for the base. So I am going to spray it now, guys. Everything else is going to be done with pencil. I'm not going to put a base of anything down on the leaves and things because it's too fiddly, and there's really no point with that. Um, the best thing about using pan pastels is that you can cover a large area quickly for a base, and that's why I've done it on there. So the fixative I'm using is this one, Pastel Fixative Frisk. So if you type in that on Amazon, I'll try and link it in the description if I can find it for you to make it easier. But this is the one I use. Now you do want a ventilated room when you use this and you do have to spray it from a distance. Um, and then it should be dry in five minutes. But if you want to leave it longer, obviously this is part one and you'll have to wait to part, for part two um, to colour along anymore. So I will spray this just to the side of me. I have got a window open. So you want it at a nice distance. You don't want to actually you don't want to saturate your colouring page, but you just want to do it at a nice distance. And make sure you've got nice even coverage on there. So that's nice and fixed now. And that's part one. So in part two, we will come back and do all the fun pencil detailing. Um, it might be two or three parter again. Normally my colour longs are three parters, but I like to take my time and just explain things a bit more. And you know, I know not everyone's a speedy colourist. So yeah, please do stay tuned for part two. I hope you enjoyed this part and I'll see you soon. Bye bye everyone.